why do some African Americans feel that we, they, they can't see that we're just asking for rights when for so long they asked for rights and all of a sudden maybe it just didn't happen soon enough. Maybe we should have asked for rights back in the 60s when, you know, every, they were getting their rights and if, I mean, if we were to ask then they would have shown interest. They would have been like, yeah, we're getting our rights. We need to give it to somebody else. But now we've got this huge 40-year gap. I think we need to be careful about comparing uh, what's going on with the LGBT movement and the African American Civil Rights Movement. I think obviously there are some similarities in that both communities are fighting for uh, equal treatment under the law. However, I think uh, that what African Americans had to go to uh, throughout our history in the United States, whether it's um, things like Jim Crow laws or segregation, etc., is not exactly what we're going through as LGBT people here in America. And I think that when we talk about try to conflate the two and uh, uh, compare them as being equivalent, it's, I think, very uh, divisive. There's a similarity here. I mean, it's analogous to the African American civil rights movement in particular because of the legal principles. And I think a lot of why that analogy has come up a lot in recent years is because our movement has done a lot of litigation. A lot of them are here, but I don't know where. One of the things I, I thought when I first saw the title for um, Is Gay the New Black? was that this was uh, intentionally written to be provocative. It was uh, written um, in, in, in kind of a, a smart-ass kind of way. Um, and I think it was written to get a rise out of people. To me, a, a, good, a good sentiment is one that challenges people. That sentiment is not about equating our struggle with the black struggle. It is about saying it's our turn to assert ourselves in a way that is more powerful and that is more assertive. Um, we have a black president right now. Do you think that we could have an elected out gay or lesbian president? I don't think that would be possible right now. And in that sense, gay is the new black. Gay is the new black, I think, is a very overly simplistic and, you know, possibly offensive to people and, you know, in some ways rightfully so. I would never put that on a sign. I don't think it should be the slogan for our movement, <laughs> but I don't think it's inappropriate to draw comparisons. Some of what we saw out of Prop 8 was, um, you know, once the, the proposition passed, some white gay people pointed the finger at uh, African American voters, even though African American voters only made up 10% of the electorate in California. No, we're not, no, we're we're not gay, but we support Charlie. I mean, like, if people die, like, if, um, I said that wrong. If people, if get two gay people get married, and it's not gonna kill anybody, so like, let them be, let them do what they want. We're not gay, but we still support Charlie. Y'all already know what it is. Right. DPL. What do you have to say no on Prop 8? I don't gotta say nothing, I gotta say I support y'all. Well, I think in a lot of ways, um, it's been almost like we've been forgotten, LGBT, African-American people. Uh, the African-American community doesn't talk so much about uh, black gay people, and when the leadership of uh, the African-American community think and talk to gay people, they're usually talking to white gay people. And when white gay people talk about black people, they don't necessarily uh, include African-American gay people. So we are, uh, I think, in a, in a unique position to help bridge the gap between both communities. But in so many ways, we are left out of the conversation. But having said that, it's also incumbent upon African-American uh, LGBT people to be more vocal, to come out, and to be open and honest about who we are, and both in the African-American community as well as in the LGBT community.